Welcome. Welcome to Flagship's online training video. If you are watching this, it is um, most likely because you were unable to make our live training. Um, it is very similar. It's going to cover the same information as our live training, but a little bit different um, scenarios. And if you have any questions at any time, uh, please just reach out to your uh, coordinator at your school. Um, as well as we're going to be going through uh, a lot of items found in your manual, broken up into sections, and at the end of each section, the video will pause and you will have the opportunity to take a short quiz on the information we just went over. So, welcome. Uh, the purpose of this training is for you to get a greater sense of the flagship program and what we do as an organization, as well as um, a connection um, with your flagship coordinator, the, your fellow instructors, as well as the students that you'll be working with. An understanding of your role as an instructor and your responsibilities with the flagship program and hopefully you'll be gaining an understanding of flagship and the school policies um, to ensure healthy positive relationships and programming and um, you uh, hopefully will gain some classroom acknowledgement behavior management tools um, and if any time you have any questions about um, that content check in with your um, development coordinator all right let's go so about the flagship program, we, um, the flagship program is a community school-based partnership. Our mission is to enhance the social, academic, cultural, and physical achievement of Missoula's young people by creating opportunities during non-school hours that help them really succeed and grow to become healthy uh, adults. We began in 1995 and we started as a drug prevention program. Uh, we've really evolved in the last 20 years, um, but that is our, our core basis is really that drug prevention program. We connect community resources um, to schools to create opportunities for youth and increasing the focus on academics, attachment to schools, and keeping kids safe after school. Fun with a purpose, essentially. Uh, our program has been part of two national studies, pretty cool, and um, these studies show that the flagship program is totally working. Uh, we knew that. We are achieving goals that we started out to accomplish, and the kids in the flagship program really value the program. They love it. They think it's awesome. They love the adults as part of the program. They love what they're learning, um, and it really helps them build their social networks, uh, their self-confidence, and really feeling connected to school. Um, as a result, your role in the flagship program is crucial. You are the protective factor in the lives of these students. You are there one-on-one -on -one making connections, really helping them feel safe and grow, and your role, we couldn't do it without you. So, um, sit back, and we are going to go through a little bit of your job description. Right, as we get started on our online journey, flagship training, um, you hopefully you have in front of you, and you should, if you don't, contact your coordinator right away, uh, a copy of your flagship manual. Um, you should have received this um, in your um, one of your site visits or connecting with your N uh, YDC, and you are just going to be able to follow right around, right along. I'll reference page numbers and I will let you just kind of explore the manual. We are going to start with the job description and you can find that in the manual to page four. And um, your specific duties um, and responsibilities um, really that we're interested in, a huge one is taking attendance. So attendance is how we can show in our data how many students are involved in a program. It's how we know whether a program is successful. We report our attendance to a lot of partner organizations that we work with so that we can um, grow the program and so attendance, really important. Um, next is reporting accidents. Um, if something happens while you are um, working on the flagship program, immediately report anything that you um, might find um, concerning with your coordinator. That includes um, if something happens in a classroom, you're in a classroom like this, there's a lot of things in the classroom. If something happens to any of the property in the classroom, 
please report that right away. Um, if someone falls down and hurts themselves, whatever that looks like, check in with your coordinator right away. Um, that flows right into open communication with your coordinator. Your coordinator is there to support you. We want you to have the best, most successful time with the flagship program, with the students, um, and that um, really it's important that we are talking to each other. Um, you're checking in with your coordinator. Let them know how things are going. If you even think something is very small like, Johnny uh, fell and bumped his head, but he seemed really okay. Let us know that because maybe later he isn't feeling okay. And we really, we need to know that um, so we can check in with the parents. Promptness. Um, we need you there on time. So it's, it's just, we are asking for two hours of commitment, one day a week, and we really need you to, to show up on time so that we can go over whatever our lesson plans are, check in with you, communicate with you, support you, and showing up on time really lets the students know that you care, and that's how the first step to building a really great relationship with your students. Um, the next is cleaning up. So our school staff have really graciously opened up their classrooms to us, spaces in the school, and we need to be really respectful and make sure that we leave them in better shape than we found them. So taking time at the end of your program to make sure the room is clean, the space is clean, everything is in the garbage, all that kind of stuff, really important. Um, tracking hours. We rely heavily on grants to fund our program. We're not for profit. So making sure that you are keeping a record of your hours um, and that flows into taking attendance as well. Um, those are all really important. And the last one, modeling behavior. Um, part of the program's goal is to normalize positive behavior. And the students are really looking at you to show how to act and how to behave. And so making sure that you are really following those, being respectful, being helpful, being kind, listening, all of those great skills that, that we are encouraging them to follow and live up to, and, um, and that really it defines the flagship program. Our next section, and I feel like probably one of the most important sections that we have in this training video, is um, safe touch. And really what I, we would really like you to take away is that the child has control of the touch. And so limit touch to avoid confusion. And so what we mean by that is that um, when you lift up a student or tickle a student or maybe you touch the back of their head and the child isn't ready for that touch or they didn't ask to engage in that touch, that can make them feel really unsafe and really uncomfortable. So some of the appropriate touch that we um, are looking for that's okay that we really encourage is a, a shoulder to shoulder side hug if a student is coming in for a hug, uh, handshakes, high fives, and then really if you're unsure, um, just getting permission like, hey, let's high five or whatever that looks like. And you'll really get to, to know your students and learn your students. And some of the don'ts that are uh, really personal are touching a student's hair, a head, piggyback rides, sitting on laps, full frontal hugs, tickling, wrestling, or anything that really takes the control away from the student. Our next um, section that we would like to cover is substance abuse. abuse. So all schools are drug-free workplaces and programs. And we are a uh, prevention, drug and alcohol prevention based program. So um, we do not tolerate any substance abuse um, in our programs. So using before or during instructor hours is not permissible. And um, no tobacco use in the presence of children. And um, some of what we do is, um, and you may in, uh, encounter this in your program, is what happens when um, the students in your program want to engage in a conversation about drugs and alcohol. So in a, a lot of our after school programs, we have created this environment that is really comfortable and really fun and you're this really cool adult that they look up to and they start to feel comfortable with and they may start asking you questions about drugs and alcohol. And I think one of the train of thoughts that we, we often have is telling kids or students about the worst experience you have or talking to them about it and, and thinking that they're going to take away, oh, hey, that was terrible. But 
really in actuality, what a student will take away from engaging them in a conversation about drugs and alcohol is that, whoa, you're so cool and you did it? That's awesome, I can do it. So what we really encourage is just letting students know that um, their brain isn't developed yet, and when we experiment with drugs and alcohol with our brain not developed, it can really have long-lasting effects. And if you find that you have students or a student who really engages in these conversations a lot, check in with us as a coordinator so that we can follow up and that we can give them the appropriate um, help or engage them in the appropriate conversations. Dress code, what do I wear to flagship? Um, pretty simple and easy. Um, we expect you to dress professionally um, and appropriately. Um, inappropriate um, clothing, we consider anything that has a drug or alcohol uh, reference, logo, label, um, and you might not even think about it in the terms of, hey, I just ran a really cool race this weekend. That race was sponsored, sponsored by the Kettle House, and that may be somewhere on your shirt. So just being aware that um, our community, uh, we have a lot of community events that are sponsored by breweries or whatever that looks like, and making sure that we aren't wearing those to flagship, as well as anything that has offensive la labels, um, logos, or has inadequate covering. Um, and you can see by this diagram, we would like to have your shoulders covered, no low tops, midriff area, and back are covered. Um, just really making sure that what you're wearing is uh, professional and appropriate, and then also appropriate for the activity that you're running. If your activity is outside, we expect that you are dressed to be play outside. And if your activity is running around, we expect that you are wearing sneakers and that you are um, ready to play. Next is cell phone use. Uh, we have them, we use them. They can be a great tool, but during the program, what we find is that if you are engaged on your phone, you are not engaging with the student. So our expectation is that your phone is away while you're at flagship and that the student's phone is away as well. Um, there may be some circumstances while you're waiting for a phone call and we can be relatively flexible, check in with your YDC. Um, and then some other points uh, to really mention are that at no point in time should you be exchanging phone numbers with a student or Facebook or email or any communication outside of flagship. And then as well, if a student asks you, hey, I need to use your phone, I need to call my mom, or what games do you have, or have you tried this cool app, you should be not sharing your phone with students at all. If it is a, a concern about a student needing to call home, then your um, coordinator can come and help that student out. And it's not our expectation that you are sharing your phone with a student. So just put it away, have fun, and play. We are mandatory reporting. Uh, we are mandatory reporters. And so the beauty of the relationship that you will develop with the students is that you kind of get into this like really cool, awesome, comfortable relationship and they may feel so comfortable with you that they are gonna share information um, about their lives um, that could require you to report that information. Um, and during that process, you will always be supported by your uh, coordinator and you will never have to go through this process alone. Um, but some steps to handling reportable information, um, listening attentively, letting the students uh, speak freely and just showing support and believing their story reassuring the student, um, maintaining confidentiality um, with the coordinator, and uh, this one is really important, is not making promises about not telling anyone. So if a student comes to you and says, hey, uh, I've got a secret and I, I can't have you tell anybody, I wanna tell you something about what's going on at home, but I need you to promise not to tell anyone. Your response to that is, I really am interested in keeping you safe and I won't tell anyone who doesn't need to know that I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to tell someone, but I won't tell anyone who doesn't need to know. Um, you can't make those promises and um, the next step would be calling Child Protective Services as necessary. You will be doing that with your coordinator, with support of your coordinator, and then filling out a flagship and um, MCPS incident report. Again, totally supported by your coordinator.
talking to parents. So you may be super comfortable talking to kids, and then you think about talking to parents, and you're like, oh no, I'm gonna have to talk to parents. Most of the time, you will never have to um, really talk to parents about anything that is uncomfortable or um, unnecessary. Um, we'll support you in that, but um, you may have a parent come pick up, and you only wanna talk to those parents about their student. Um, and as well, and beginning and ending positively. So if a parent comes in and says, how was Susie's day? And maybe Susie really struggled with her day, letting them know that, oh, she came in and she was so happy and excited and she was really engaged when we did this, but then she really struggled with um, being kind to some of her friends. But then when we talked about it, she was a really great listener and she ended up talking to that student and being really kind. So kind of that, that beginning and ending positively, and then just cite any specific behavior and consequences. Um, and if, if this is something that you feel really uncomfortable with, just really checking in with your coordinator. Um, if it's something that really needs to be discussed, your coordinator can help you out with that. This is a volunteer uh, position. We understand that, we respect that. However, we take this really seriously, um, and you should as well. So um, we can at any time, based on your performance, um, habitually being late, showing up under the influence, um, receiving a DUI during your time with flagship, um, those can be all uh, things that we can ask you to no longer participate in our program. Uh, for a more in-depth lift of those, you can turn to page 8 in your manual. So when you come to the end of your flagship experience, we hope that you've had a wonderful experience and the students have as well. And um, we, our expectation is that um, you end all communication with flagship students after this session ends. So we are um, not interested in you um, having a Facebook conversations with students, giving out your numbers, babysitting for the families, and um, if you are really feeling like you had such a great experience and, and um, attached to the students, come back and, and volunteer next semester or next year, and you can always let the students know how great of a time you've had and that you are interested in coming back to their school and helping again.
for this next section, we are going to be looking at behavior management. Um, and this includes building relationships, behavior management strategies, steps of consequences, flagship discipline referral system, and then um, our tips for behavior management and engagement. And really we're hoping we can provide you with some tools that you might not already have or really reinforce the tools that you already know. Our next section is building relationships. And this is gonna be the key to your success um, in the flagships program uh, with the students as well. Um, they are gonna become more opening, open and willing. They're gonna be more receptive to you and the program. And some of those ways that you can do that learning their names. That is my number one suggestion is learning their names as fast as you can. Um, second is activities and games. Use these in your program. The students, when you all start building relationships, when they get to know the students in the programs and you get to know them, everybody is going to have just a better time and feel more comfortable and it's going to be more successful. You'll go through some icebreakers and activities maybe in your practice week if you haven't done that already. Um, show them that you care. That's what arriving on time, learning their names, um, remembering things about them, asking them how their weekend was, what books do they read, what movies they like. Show them that you are really invested and you are interested in getting to know them. Listen unintentionally. So listening what they have to say uninterrupted. Um, sometimes the stories get wild and crazy and hilarious and funny and you don't know where they're going, but just listening and showing that you care. Um, sensitivity to their circumstances. So um, a lot of our students, we have no idea what's going on in their lives um, outside of school, just like there's a lot going in your life outside of school. So just really respecting and being um, sensitive that there is a lot going on outside um, of the program. Maybe they had a really terrible day at school, they may, they're gonna bring that after school. So just having patience and respect to where they're at. And then creating a safe environment. Um, and creating a safe environment, really you can do that by um, letting them know that you expect the same expectations after school as during the school day. Being respectful, being safe, being kind. Um, and setting those up, following through on what you say and what you're going to do, learning their names, that all um, builds a really safe environment for them. Behavior management strategies. Um, if you have your manual open, you can turn to page 10. Um, and this really goes in depth about behavior management strategies. So I'm just going to really highlight and talk about um, the ones that we have here on the slide and rewarding positive behavior. If you want someone to continue doing something awesome, let them know how awesome they're doing. So if a student is being really kind by opening the door without asking, let them know specifically, hey, Susie, that was awesome that you opened the door for us. That was really being respectful and kind. So being specific um, and rewarding that positive behavior, motivating the students. Um, your energy is what motivates them. So come in with um, a really excited, uh, positive attitude, but then letting them know that um, if they're being really loud, jumping right in immediately, letting them know the sooner that we're quiet, the sooner we can get started. Make a point. Um, simple actions can address inappropriate behavior without calling attention. And we never want to call out a student when we are addressing um, behavior. Um, just sitting next to them and being quiet or um, talking to them privately after about the behavior. Um, but just making sure that you are um, addressing that behavior right away and making a point of doing so following through the consequences. So this one is really important. Um, so an example would be an appropriate consequence if you are not sitting and being quiet so we can get started, we are not gonna be able to get to our super fun activity at the end of the day because I'm afraid we're gonna run out of time. Instead of saying, if we are not super quiet right now, we are gonna sit here during the whole flight chip program and not do anything and be quiet. That is an unrealistic consequence. We are not going to be able to sit for an hour and a half and be quiet. Um, and try new strategies. Um, get creative. Um, check in with your coordinator. Ask for support. That's what we're here for. 
and then um, separate students from the group. If you have a situation where something really needs to be addressed, again, making sure that is um, private, we're not um, making a student feel uncomfortable in front of everyone else and checking in. And again, if you need help or suggestions, really check in with your coordinator. Oh, you read a nerd. Oh, it's it's a dumb. Indicative. Indicative. Oh, it looks so dumb. You're a nerd. I like dumb nerdy things like Star Wars and comic books and dumb, dumb super. You're an orphan. Ah, you're so dumb, man. Look, look at how dumb and fat you are. Owen, could you come with me for a minute, please? So. How you doing? So Owen, you know, I noticed you were picking on Nate a lot there. What's going on? I've been having a real hard time with school and my grades are all terrible now. And my dad's been drinking a lot and I've been having a real hard time in general. It sounds like you've been really going through a tough time lately. Um, I'm still a little concerned about how you're then treating Nate. Do you think that was fair? No. No. So, how do you think you're going to make that up to um, Nate? I'm going to apologize, definitely. Good. Listen, man, I'm, I'm sorry for all the names I called you, and I, I've been having a real hard time in school, and I'm sorry I hit you. I, all my grades are doing at poorly. I've got Fs across the board, and my dad's been drinking a lot lately, and I've been having a bad time recently. I'm sorry for... I forgive you. Indeed, Nate. My support of his tyranny and my mocking you on account of your being an orphan was simply unjustifiable and it sh 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 I forgive you. Um, and then in accordance with the behavior management, we do have some tips. They are located on page 11 of your man manual. Some of my favorites that I use frequently are special jobs. So you have a student who has got just a lot of energy and maybe they're talking while you're talking, um, give them something else to do. Give them a special job, get them to help you. Chances are they really just need someone to interact with, engage with, and I, I find that that can help with a lot of uh, behavior management. Um, again, using the student's names, it is really difficult to um, manage that behavior if you don't remember their name. Hey you, stop doing what you're doing. Does it work? Hey Susie, I can see that maybe you're not as focused right now. Let's check in, find out what's going on. And then um, really, I like to just talk to the student. Just find out what's going on. Um, hey, I, Johnny, I notice usually you are really super excited and right now I can see that maybe you're feeling really mad or stressed. What's going on? How, how can I help you have a successful flagship? So read through those, um, come up with plans, solutions, um, and what you might use in your program. Let's try that one again. All right, next one is our um, top 10 student engagement tips. It's located on page 12 of your manual. You're gonna be leading a group of students. Some of these are gonna be really helpful for you, and you may have some that you already use, and some of these are new to you. Um, my favorites that you should really get familiar with, I think that you'll use um, all the time in your um, time of flagship is attention getters. Get creative on how you're going to get the room to listen to you, whatever that looks like. Um, and then teach it to them on your first day. So maybe it looks like every time I say, hey flagship, you say, hey what? Practice it a few times, let them know that's how you're going to get their attention. Um, having transition activities. You are going to be going outside, having a snack, doing an activity. Figure out how you're really going to engage them in the times that we are in transition. Um, icebreakers, having a little couple of little games that the group really likes to do. Um, play those on the first day and then bring them back when there's some downtime. And then um, really just establishing those routines, letting them know what they are, following them, and above all, having fun. 
So this online training is really just a, a, a time for us to really get the ball rolling and we really just the tip of the iceberg or the bottom of the mountain with these behavior management. These are just some really beginning tools to get you to start thinking about how you're going to manage your flagship groups. Uh, there's a lot of more resources in the manual that you can read as well as check in any time with your flagship coordinator. If you want additional games, ideas, you want to brainstorm some ways to really manage your group and you'll get to know more as you get to know your group. You have survived your flagship online training and we have met our goal. Um, I'm hoping that you have taken away some information about the flagship program that you didn't know, learned some skills, learned some tools, and that you are really excited to get started um, with flagship in your um, awesome instructor, mentor, leadership role. Um, at any time that you have any questions about this training, there was um, something that you didn't know or didn't learn or you want to explore some more ideas, check in with your flagship coordinator as well as let them know, take a minute, email them, let them know that you finished this uh, training and, um, and making sure that you've finished all of the quizzes and yeah, ready to start, ready to have fun.